Hi, I'm David. And I'm Kimberly. Today we're going to show you the proper way to prepare your food for California stone cooking. It's a great healthy way to do cooking. There are a variety of foods that you can cook including vegetables, seafood, and meats. So let's go now and show you how to properly prepare your food. All right, now we're ready to show you how to properly prepare your food. Hold on. David, is that seafood I see? Well, yeah, seafood is great on the stones, on the cooking stones. I'm sure it is, but I have a seafood allergy, so it's very important that you prepare and cook your food on separate stones. Gotcha, you know, that makes so sense to do it. You definitely gotta be careful with the, uh, with the type of food that you cook. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is actually the cooking stone not heated up. You can actually take one of the stones put it into the freezer for about four hours, and then you can display cold hors d'oeuvres, like the shrimp, on this, and this is gonna keep it cool. The shrimp's probably gonna disappear faster than it needs to anyways, but this is a great way to, to do your cold hors d'oeuvres as well. Absolutely. So, let's get started. We got a lot of stuff going on over here on, on our plate. Why don't you show us what you got over on your side? Okay, well we have a variety of vegetables that you can use. We'll go ahead and start with the mushrooms. I like to cut the end off first and then place the mushroom on its back side, cutting all of your vegetables a quarter inch thick. Makes it easier for cooking. Awesome, that's good. And you know what, it's pretty much the same with, with the meats. Now you can do all kinds of different kinds of meats. Uh, I have uh, pork, pork chops, you can do steak as well and chicken. And seafood, again, as I said, seafood is, is great cooking and your guests are gonna love it. And in this one here I have the tuna, some scallops, and some shrimp. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with uh, a piece of the, uh, the meat, the pork chop. Mm, that looks good. It is. Now what you wanna do is you wanna trim and cut off the fat um, as much as possible first, because again, remember this is healthy cooking, healthy eating. And what you wanna do is, on a piece of meat, say like a steak or something, is you actually want to cut against the grain and not with it. Because if you cut with it, you get the long stringy stuff, nobody really likes to eat that. Um, you want to cook, cut this in pretty much the same thing, about a quarter inch um, little sections to it. You just want to cut it. And what's nice about this is when you're cutting them thin, is it takes a lot less time to cook. It's nice because your, your guests are eating right away, which is really cool. You get it on, get it off, and they'll start eating. So again, you take your meat and cut it about quarter inches off, just like that. What else you got? Well, I have a green bell pepper. This one has already been cleaned and cut out and de-seeded. So you're gonna take your knife and you're going to cut the bell pepper in half. And then you will slice this also in quarter inch slices. God, that's some great color. It has so much color to the, uh, to the cooking, to the arrangement. That's awesome. Vegetables are always good to have. That's good. Now let me show you something on the, the seafood again. Let's go over here to the scallops. You can take the scallop and um, they're, they're, these things are great cooking. You can take them and cut them in half. If they're the jumbo ones like this, you can take it it's very simple. These things cut like butter. Just cut it right in half. These things are ready to go. They just take a couple seconds right on the grill and you're ready to roll. Scallops, great, easy. What else you got to throw us over there, Kimmy? Well, we have a banana squash. And what you'll want to do with this is cut each end off and cut it into quarter inch rounds. If you notice, the key thing is cutting all of your vegetables and your meats into quarter inch. And if you don't get it, Perfect, that's okay, but try to get it as close to a quarter of an inch as possible. Yeah, seems like a perfect size for cooking. Yes. On the stone. Let's go back over to here. This, this tuna is fantastic. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? You wanna get some nice pieces of tuna, about, about this thick, you got about a, a quarter inch, half inch thick, and you can't cook it just like this on the rock, but you wanna make sure you share it. So when you're cutting it, Put it in nice, nice bite-sized pieces. Everybody's gonna love a little sliver of this. And you know what, the, the other really good thing about cutting the meat and the vegetables ahead of time is you can get actually a little bit of food, make it look like it's a lot of food. Oh wow. And we're gonna show you how to arrange it, but when you, um, when you do this, it's gonna be so fabulous. It's gonna be great stuff. Now, I wanna talk about the last thing here on our, on our plate to cut up is, is our shrimp. The shrimp is fantastic. Your guests are gonna love the shrimp cooking. Now there's a special way to prepare for this and I'm gonna show you that in just a minute, all right? All right. Cool. 
All right, now I'm gonna talk about my favorite thing to cook on the stone, and that's shrimp. I love the shrimp. What you wanna get is you wanna get the, the shrimp that's shelled and deveined, and most of them come that way already. And what we're gonna do is actually pound the shrimp, and I'm gonna show you how to do that, it's very simple. You wanna put it down on a, a cutting board firm surface, and you wanna cover it with a storage bag, a, a clear plastic storage bag, because you don't want it splattering all over the place when you, when you pound it. You wanna take your pounder and kind of give it a few whacks, and you'll see that it, it flattens itself out and kind of spreads all over the place. And I'm gonna show you kind of what it looks like here. It's kind of like that. It's kind of thin, it's kind of spread out, it looks kind of, kind of strange on this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to arrange this on a plate so it looks really, really good. Now you can do three or four of these at a time. It's very simple to do. Uh, again, one of my favorite things to cook on the stone. Well, now that you've covered your favorite things, let's talk about one of my favorite things, yeah. the snow pea. The snow pea is really good for the stone. What you'll need to do first though is remove the fibrous string along the side like this which allows this to be nice and tender to eat you'll take this place it on the stone and cook it and yummy oh it sounds great mm. now this this stuff looks so good out here even the way it is set up all the beautiful colors and everything we're going to actually show you how to arrange this so it looks even better before your guest comes so what just in a couple minutes we'll come back and show you that all right, now that we're done showing you how to prepare the food, this is how you present it. This is so beautiful. You can see we have the pork chops with the garnish. We got the vegetables over there, the seafood. It's all nice and neat on here. Isn't that beautiful? That's so wonderful. Your, your guests are just gonna love this. And the best part about cooking with the stone is that you could actually prepare all of your food the day before or hours before your party actually starts. Once you're done preparing it, just place plastic wrap over it and stick it in your fridge saves a lot of time instead of cooking over the stove all day. That's a great advantage. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is marinade seasoning the meat. Now we don't want you using marinades because of the sugar content. It has a tendency to uh, burn a little bit or stick on the rock. The best thing to use is a dry rub or some light seasoning, salt and pepper. But the one I like the best is using uh, dipping sauces. It's so wonderful. You can get so many different kinds of sauces like a sweet and sour sauce or soy sauce. What are Ooh, your favorite sauces? Mustard sauces are the best for me. Awesome. That way you have a nice variety. People can take what they want. Want. It's just uh, totally fantastic. Now you can see that we have the two rocks here. Remember we said we're going to keep these things separate uh, for Kim there. We're going to have the seafood and, and on one rock and then vegetables and meat on the other. Does that sound good to you? Absolutely. <laughs> Again, it's extremely important that you keep them separate due to cross-contamination and allergies. Yeah, definitely, definitely want to pay attention to that. Now we're going to take you over to the stove and show you how to heat your rock and get ready for cooking. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat the stones. You put the stones right on the stove and you're gonna crank it up on high for 30 minutes. That's gonna get the stones really nice and hot, ready for cooking. What we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer the stone to the stainless steel holder. And I'm gonna use a fork to help me with this. And we just hold it at the back end, scoop it up, and transfer it right over to the holder, right like that. You wanna make sure you turn the oven off. I'm gonna do the rest of them. We're gonna take them right over to the table. Once you bring the stones to the table, now you wanna make sure you use pot holders because they're really, really hot. You set them down in, in the middle of the table like this. We got some friends and relatives here for us to enjoy a great meal. We're gonna take a little bit of the grilling salts. Now you can use a light uh, coat of oil, but for the health reasons, we prefer using the salt. Just sprinkle some on into your hand and just give a little sprinkle in here. Now this is gonna help keep the meat from sticking to the rock. We're gonna do that and pretty much start working. We got the presentation, everything's ready to go. Everybody dig in and start cooking. Here, pass the salt over there. All right, one really important thing to remember is these rocks are really, really hot. So when you have children around the table, make sure that they don't touch it. And these rocks are gonna stay hot for about two hours. So again, do not touch them. They will be very, very hot. 
Isn't this awesome? Everybody's having a good time. What do you guys think? It's awesome. California stone Great. cooking? California stone cooking. Right on.